All righty. I've got a new, I guess the software's updated on my phone, not that you care, but it's got a new counter that's very annoying. First turn of this scenario, I think it's called the Manstein's Fire Brigades or something like that, out of the OCS system for the third winter. It's a little scenario. It's a little crowded scenario as well. <clears throat> it's nine turns long. And what we're going to do here is just run through what's happened literally in just the first few uh, phases of the first turn of the scenario. And in my prior video, when I did the opening assessment of what each side might do and what the objectives were and all the rest of it, uh, I, I was looking at how relatively easy it might be for the Soviets to sort of push through this little gap here and uh, really take it to the Germans. Now, of course, uh, first impressions are always, or not always, but are often uh, wrong, especially when I'm giving them. And the the challenge the Soviets have, if you look at the overall map, is that they have a paucity of supply. And I think this scenario is specifically tuned uh, and picked to represent sort of being some, at some point after uh, an initial push. It's the 26th of December is the, technically the date that we're playing from in 1943. And so... It looks like we've had the beginnings of a breakthrough in a, in a couple of areas. There's another section off map here that you can't see. But what, um, so what's going on then is that we have only probably eight SP in this area, <coughs> uh, the supply points to sort of bridge a gap here. And by the time you pay for some artillery, fuel some formations, and then plan the attacks, you're not left with a whole lot going forward. So, and you don't get supply in this scenario on the first turn, which is a, a different thing than most other scenarios that you'll play in the in the uh, in the series. You know, most scenarios you do all you're always rolling for supply in the first turn. So, no supply and no replacements in the first turn, which is fine. That's the same for both sides. So, uh, I had laid out a fantastic set of airstrikes around here in order to uh, disrupt the enemy artillery that was in reserve. This is big naval workers here that were in reserve. Uh, and those reserves were set up. This, this guy was in reserve as well. And uh, we'll talk about him in a second. Uh, as was this chap just out of screen, a little eight, little eight rated unit. We wanted to, let's see, we wanted to uh, DG these two hexes in particular, uh, this hex as well, and then the artillery that was in reserve so we could knock them out of reserve. And uh, there was another unit here. And we were quite successful. We DG'd everybody except for this hex that we were looking to try and uh, disrupt. And we actually even got a kill step on that artillery. And I kind of feel bad for the artillery guys, right? It's almost like if it's the last step, it probably shouldn't get eliminated, but whatever. Uh, it was kill shot, so we, we we killed the unit that was in that hex. And I'm thinking, wow, this is going great, right? Had the, all the airstrikes went in. The, the Soviets lost a few steps with flak, but uh, two flak, I should say. But they had done their air sweeps before, so earlier on in the turn, we had uh, swept all the, um, all the, uh, yeah, the 109s here, 109As here, and got them all grounded and aborted and even killed the step on them. And I'm thinking, this is going great. This is going to be just as I expected, despite the fact there's not a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of supply. Well, long story short, it was the reaction phase. And so the Germans went to work. Now they could have brought some air in, but they really have a very limited amount of air. And I'm really not super excited about putting it at risk this early in the game. So I relied on expensive artillery to do the work. And I brought uh, this unit to bear. And I brought uh, this unit over here to bear because I, I made a mistake in the setup here. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second if I, if I get to it. But uh, what I wanted to do was attempt to disrupt the two hexes that were probably going to attack 
the units that were disrupted here. So I released reserves and brought up units to improve the strength of the halved defenders here. So I brought six factors with a four rated AR uh, action rating or efficiency rating. And this little guy was going to be halved down to one and a half and he would have rounded up to two once we added everybody together. Well, not technically, but uh, things round up once you get to the final odds is when is when you do the rounding. So uh, we we would have this half, one and a half, and now I'd have uh, uh, five and a half, seven and a half factors defending. So I was thinking, well, that's pretty good. That 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 with a four rated dude, so that'll be okay. Well, I put the artillery in here, and this stack has, without moving the camera. <laughs> because I'm in a very, very tight situation uh, around the stand, so I don't want to move too much. This 25 here, where is he? I'm trying to find him. I think I moved the units. Here they are here. I actually had him on the board. Uh, big, big old, well, it's not a huge stack, but it's uh, it was going to be enough. It was 11 factors coming in, uh, attacking one and a half. And that was about the best I could really bring in without... Uh, losing the ability to get some exploiting going here and press these guys through as reserves. So I wanted to try and make that attack, even though it was going to be 13 to one and a half, it probably wasn't the best attack. Now it's a terrible attack. And I'm, I'm seriously thinking that that was a mistake and I probably should not make that attack. Now this stack is quite high and I'm not going to mess with it at the moment. It goes back there. It's a similar quantity uh, of factors trying to attack into this stack, which is even stronger. So we've forestalled for one turn the initial Soviet attack, made them spend a bunch of supply. These guys are now in reserve, got nowhere to go unless they attempt to try and do an overrun, uh, which if I had some extra air and hadn't used all my air, I could potentially try and DG this stack or this stack and attempt to overrun these guys uh, because both of those were quite significantly large. I didn't combine, this is one formation, I didn't combine that formation because I didn't want to leave it as a juicy target for a cheap shot with artillery, one, two, three. Uh, I didn't want to leave it as a cheap shot to allow the Germans to potentially kill a step on my stack, right? So uh, I, pro I probably could have just killed off an artillery unit, but... Uh, I think there's a new optional rule that allows you to roll randomly or, or someone gets to choose which, art, which unit dies. I don't know what, how it works. Uh, I'm just going to play by the rules that I currently have in my little handbook here and we'll, we'll leave it at that. So uh, something would have died in that hex potentially if I had to combine them. So it's like, yeah, you know, got to keep them separate. Well, now I don't really po potentially don't have enough to get a decent result on an overrun there. So I'm kind of uh, at a bit of a loose end as far as the combat goes for this turn. And I was putting all my eggs in this basket here. And they have now all been, they all had the, the yolks cracked on them, which was, uh, which is annoying. Um, trying to look and see what else was here. What else was I going to mention? Oh, I think I was talking about these guys being reserved. I, I can't remember what else I was going to say. But interesting opening turn. Uh, if I was going to do this again, I w might want to rejigger moving these guys around and maybe consolidate this entire 25th tank to here, this entire formation here into one hex here. Um, once again, you're making yourself a huge target with a lot of modifiers that is definitely going to DG yourself unless the enemy rolls amazingly bad. So uh, we might see what happens here with these attacks that we might at least force a retreat of a hex or something and we can always afford to lose some units here since we uh, have more than enough to spare because I have over here one, two, three, four, five other large formations, six formations here. That's a small one there. Uh, and more reinforcements coming out as well, which reminds me, I need to uh, I need to move a reinforcement under the board. So I've got to do that before I do the combat and we'll get this guy on the board. 
we'll catch up and do some more video in the next little while. Have a good one.